Good morning once again, guys. Welcome to the Worship Ministry course. Um, before we go ahead and get started, uh, Kiran, can I request you to please start us off with a word of prayer? Yes, I see. Father God, we, once again, we just come before your throne, Father God. Father God, thanking you for the day, Father God. Thanking you the 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 month, new month, Father God. Thanking you the subject. Thanking you the sir, all the student, Father God. Father God, help us to understand the subject, Father God, and move through your kingdom work, Father God. Father God, bless to each and every student, Father God. Father God, those students willing to join, Father God, help them to join the classes, Father God. Father God, thanking you for everything. Thanking you, Father God. Upcoming time, submitting to your hand, Father God. Take care of every side, Father God. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kiran. Pretty appreciate it. Uh, all right, guys. I hope you all are doing well. And, um, and so before I want to continue, right, this is something that I wanted to, you know, just check with, uh, you know, uh, y'all is uh, so we covered uh, extensively on the chapter that talks about the organizational aspect of worship ministry right organizational aspect of worship ministry um, and if I were to just ask you what was like you know what points can, uh, helped you uh, with, I mean what was your key takeaways uh, from that chapter in organizational aspect what I mean what would it be if you have your notes with you, uh, we can, you know, take a quick glance at it because I think, uh, you know, this course is all about, uh, yes, there is uh, the spiritual aspect, the theological aspect of worship that we discussed in the first chapter. But after that, it's uh, all of it is very practical, isn't it? Uh, the realities of worship ministry. Now, what is expected of uh, of a worship leader of, or of a worship pastor or what a, worship, what a pastor, senior pastor should expect of his worship leader or his worship pastor, uh, you know, his or her worship pastor. Um, so uh, from what you can recollect, uh, do you mind sharing uh, what, you know, what would be your key takeaways from the organizational aspect of worship ministry? Like be it a rostering or you know the roles of a worship pastor. What what would you take with Dave? Uh, if you don't mind, let's start with you. Yes, pastor. Okay. Uh, yeah. Give me a second. Sure, sure, no problem. So we talked about the seven roles of a worship pastor and, you know, how you go about rostering a team uh, and preparing for the worship service, how you get the team to prepare. So things like that, the skills of the worship leader. So, so yeah. Uh, the, the ministry itself is, uh, it uh, actually, I, it's, it's kind of a, uh, um, I don't know how to explain it, but the the thing is, um, it itself is uh, uh, a separate ministry, uh, uh, a worship ministry itself is. Um, sometimes, uh, uh, as a worship uh, as a worship leader, we we tend to uh, we tend to. So many times we we tend to think that uh, I know how to do it, uh, I know how to organize it, how I know how to prepare it. But so, so many uh, as uh, I go through the the, the lessons and uh, and I can find uh, oh, see, I'm lacking on, on that thing, uh, and lacking on that thing, lacking on that thing. So so many times I mean I have I've seen myself oh I wish I could have done like that and I wish I could have. I, I, I could have been more organized and I could have been more communicative with, with my my members and uh, with, with with the musicians and even with the choir members uh, I was I would have been more um, uh, listening to their word and taking it to the the management and and bringing forth the word so the whole organization thing uh, is uh, well <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. One, of the, one, one of the important thing for for, for for whole worship um, ministry to grow, right. uh, it is not just uh, in our thinking. It is not just uh, uh, the way we think. Uh, yeah, it should be well organized. 
so that it can uh, benefit the whole entire church and the whole entire uh, the, the congregation and right. and so that it the, our worship yeah. be more effective yeah. and it can it can really draw uh, people to the God. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Thank you for sharing that in such detail. Uh, appreciate it. Um, Aaron, uh, would you mind uh, sharing as in uh, what is one of your key takeaways uh, that you think uh, will help you in your journey in ministry? Something that you took off from the organizational aspect of the chapter. Yeah, uh, yeah, Pastor. Uh, so far, what Aaron has learned from the uh, last class is that um, actually uh, I don't have any idea about this uh, worship. Uh, about leading the worship, but one thing uh, I have learned uh, from the last class is that uh, we have to be, uh, we have to grow more in Christ likeness. So that if he or she is a worship leader, that if 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 they are not growing in, in Christ likeness, then what others? Okay, I think we lost Aaron, but then yeah, everything that you're sh sharing was. Uh... Yeah, hello. Yes, I. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Pastor. No problem. No. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, so we have to grow more in Christ likeness. So, if we are true worshippers, we have to grow in Christ likeness. And the second thing is that, uh, if we are truly a worship leader, and if we are leading the worship, then we have to serve with uh, the excellent mm. spirit, with excellent spirit, so that we can, we can glorify God. Yeah. So yeah, that's the key. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for sharing that. And just one more person, Kiran. Uh, yeah, do you mind uh, sharing your key takeaways as well? Yeah. So I learned like uh, we we have to go uh, relationship with intimacy with God when we we like we we come before his presence then we can like lead to uh other uh, other also they can feel we as a worship leader we we stand before before god and we used to lead all the uh, all the congregation all the believers uh, through the that that kind of like uh, leading the worship so i lead like uh i feel like that yeah we mm, the yeah, intimacy with him is a uh, very important and when we come before the god and leading the worship is so, so powerful and and everyone is used to like uh, uh, notice uh, our, right. our uh, behavior and our every the little little the uh, part of our, our accent they they notice so every yeah so i learned like that thank you so it's wonderful. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you uh, so much for sharing your thoughts. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and uh, share uh, the notes screen. And I want to do a quick recap uh, just of the, some of the key points of Chapter 5 of the organizational aspect, because I believe uh, it's kind of important, okay, for us to just, uh, you know, remind ourselves of some of the points that we discussed, okay? Uh, so from, in page, from page 41, not sure if you can see it. I hope you can. Okay, good. Yeah, from page forty-one, that talks about the seven roles of a worship pastor. Uh, you know, and and to the the tools and the role, understanding the role of a worship team members. Uh, you know, understanding the role of a band musicians. Uh, you know, it's the section that talks about being skillful and not just that talking about character and are they willing to grow in their skill develop their skill and skills of the worship leader and so all these questions that you can ask yourself okay is that person reliable uh, leadership abilities relational ability calling character you know all of these are very very crucial uh, points to ask uh, you know yourself or 
before uh, you bring in a worship pastor or a worship leader, okay? And the character traits. Uh, you, you'll see why I'm reiterating this, uh, because as we continue in, in, in the next chapter that talks about spiritual aspects, this will keep coming up again, okay? It's one of our core fundamental values, right? Uh, what are the character traits of an effective worship leader? And I want you to remember these, okay? Like, are they humble? Do, uh, do they have a vibrant secret life with God? And if... Uh, if they are having it or not, how would you know? Are they accountable to you, right? Are they skilled? Are they teachable? Are they, you know, it's, it's basic questions like this are very important. And uh, talking about auditions, again, these are very practical, very realistic uh, scenarios, uh, you know, that needs to happen in any worship ministry, okay? Um, rostering worship teams, we spoke about this, the importance of organizing, rostering the team. So rostering the team simply helps you know who's playing when. Uh, and uh, this email will be sent out to, uh, actually, I just sent an email out, sent the, this roster out. Uh, when I send this roster email in an Excel sheet, I send it to the IT team to the media team, uh, you know, who does the presentations of the song lyrics, uh, you know, and also to every other location uh, coordinators and associate pastors as well. So the pastors are informed of this roster. Um, the IT team is informed of the roster. The media team is informed of the roster uh, and all your band members, the worship team members are informed of this roster. So everybody knows, uh, for example, uh, who's going to be, what is the band like for sun, you know, December 8th or what is the band like for December 15th? Everything will be mentioned. Right? So there is no confusion it's like, okay, this Sunday, who is doing what? And, you know, we don't have a team or uh, things like that. So all of this is very crucial and, uh, you know, when it comes to the organizational aspect of worship ministry. Um, you know, it's like that old saying, if you fail to plan, okay, you are planning to fail. That's what they say, <laughs> right? It's like that old saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, yeah, and if you don't plan properly, you're going, you're preparing yourself for failure types, okay? Uh, and we spoke in detail about briefly about preparing, how do you prepare yourself to lead worship, et cetera, et cetera. Um, worship ministry developmental plan. This is all for you. I mean, you can take it, tweak it for your own ministry, for your own church, see what suits best for you, okay? And then after which is when we went to the next uh, chapter, which is worship ministry in the local church, the spiritual aspect, okay? Uh, so we are expected to be worshipers on and off the stage, uh, not just lead worship, sing beautiful songs on stage and be something else, uh, you know, uh, off the stage. Uh, okay. And some of the key uh, pointers, three areas of responsibilities we expect from our worship team members. Okay, Three areas of responsibility. One is a personal life and testimony. And under personal life and testimony, we have this uh, three sub points. One is godly life, spiritual growth, and personal life of worship. Okay, godly life is simply, if you look at this image here, is expecting us to be live a life of holiness, uh, live, uh, being a vessel of honor, a life of good testimony. That's the foundation in which point B, spiritual growth happens, that you grow in God's word, uh, you're growing in the spirit, you're growing in the skill with this being the foundation, right? And then on top of that, you continue to build a life of personal worship, being a worshiper, okay? Uh, growing in skill and in worship, uh, growing in Christ-likeness and serving with humility. Uh, these are all seems to be like a very simple uh, straightforward points that you you would have heard so many 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 times in your life uh, a, a, on the journey of being a Christian or a minister or a pastor etc. But it's such basic fundamentals uh, when we miss out, and that's when our ministry kind of starts falling apart, isn't it? We start falling apart individually if if all these basic points are not strong enough, right? This is where we stopped and uh, at page fifty seven. Uh, so let's continue on from page uh, 58. So our core foundational areas of focus. One is core, okay? Uh, how to truly worship in spirit and in truth. 
uh, that is the core how to uh, you know understanding this uh, how we worship in spirit and in truth reminding us of john chapter 4 verse 22 to 24 isn't it uh, and if you if, if we all we are all very familiar with the passage uh, between jesus and the woman at the well the samaritan woman right and jesus very interestingly starts off the conversation actually in verse 22 saying you samaritans do not know what you worship but we know what we worship okay so there is a sense of knowledge and a revelation that is happening there's with the revelation comes the revelation of truth that's what jesus is pointing at so we worship with spirit spirit is the holy spirit that we worship with the help of the holy spirit that abides in us uh, to worship him who empowers us to worship him in the spirit because god is spirit and then we worship him with the truth with the truth of his word right uh, we we we've uh, you know read that scriptures in john 17 17 uh, jesus says okay your word uh, is the truth right? And then we looked at the character, our conduct as a worshippers of Jesus. Uh, it's the same list we saw in, in a couple of pages before. You know, are they humble? Uh, those are, uh, are they humble? Are they teachable? Uh, you know, are they willing to learn, uh, grow in their skill, etc.? All point towards uh, their character. How do they treat people that they think are inferior to them? Okay, so you can't just treat people who are superior to you good and nice and very respectful. But how do you treat all the people that you think might be inferior to you? Uh, you know, that's where our character is tested. Our character is not tested on the stage. Our character is tested off the stage. Right? Uh, and craft. How we hone our skills to operate in our gifting with excellence. Okay, a craft is talking about, you know, your skill, whatever you're good at. It's not necessarily music, only music or singing. It could be anything, right? Uh, you, if it's painting that you're called to do in worshiping God, that and dance and, or choreography or graphic designing or doing a v, editing a video well, right? What are you doing? About it? Okay, so i just give one example that... Uh, but this is an example of a musician because I relate to it uh, as a musician. Okay, so and I hope uh, you know you all understand it's the importance of a skill or to grow in the skill. For example, is I am leading worship, uh, you know, with my uh, with my guitar, and I, I you know I feel like the Holy Spirit. You know, I can hear the Holy Spirit telling me, okay, hey, do this song, right? Uh, saying, hey, why don't you do that song? Now, I cannot be in a position that says, oh, no, uh, you know, God is telling me to do this song, but I don't know the chords for this song. My, uh, my year in, in music is not good enough for me to play the song. So I'm not skilled enough to play that song. So what I've done is because of the limitations of my skill, I've limited God from moving through me. You understand what I'm saying? Now, God will move because he is sovereign. He will find another way to move. They, you know, but I've limited God from moving through me. Because I did not know the chords for a certain song, uh, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, to know that our skill releases God's presence. Isn't it? And we learn more about that as we go, uh, you know, in, in this chapter. But uh, that's the importance of honing your skill, your craft. What are you good at? And asking yourself, hey, can I get better? Can I get better? So God can use you and move through you. Amen. And next is uh, the chemistry, the understanding within the band. Okay, so how we engage each other as a team. Okay, notice that how we engage or interact okay interact or how we treat each other as a team and the congregation in ministry okay um this is very important the first part of it is super crucial how we engage each other how we treat each other okay so and i always say this to my team is the congregation sees like there is an 
there's an invisible line between the stage and the congregation okay so if there's a stage and the congregation is down here the congregation feels like there is an invisible line okay as when i say invisible line it's like okay they are separate we are separate okay they are different we are different so the worship team is doing one thing the congregation does is doing something else you know they are not even connected but if the congregate if the team worship team is in sync right if they are engaged if they if you know if their core values if their character and if their craft is strong okay, then they can engage each other and now they are free right they have the sense of freedom to worship uh, to worship god uh, and so freedom is like a river right freedom is like a river and river a water always flows down isn't it water doesn't flow up Right? Are you guys with me? Right? Water f always flows down, isn't it? So when the team on stage is worshiping with freedom, is you know when when everything else, the core values, the character, everything is strong, uh, you know they are confident about their set list. The river of freedom flows down from stage into the congregation, and the congregation begins to worship God freely, and God begins to move powerfully. Right? Um, so. Uh, before we get to the chemistry part, these three things are crucial. This is what you know gets us to this point four, right? And it doesn't end with point four. And the final part of our foundational areas of focus is community. Okay, uh, being part of a family of people with unity, similar interests, and callings. Okay. Uh, Probably in the next semester, when we learn about youth ministry, I will talk in detail about the importance of community. But I think if there's, if I have, if I were to just make one statement and say the importance of community is when God said it is not good for man to be alone. I think that is enough for us to understand the importance of community right for us to be plugged in with the life groups um we, with the ministry teams of the church uh, you know to volunteer in the church uh, to help around to be connected to take uh, interest in people's lives what's happening in their lives all of that is just investing in growing a community right a community is not automatically grown it's not magic it's not like magic, right? You have to invest your time, your energy, your emotions, everything into it, right? And because ministry is all about people, isn't it? Uh, you have to invest and, in, uh, you know, sacrifice so many things. And that in turn builds a community. Okay, everybody feels like one in this community. Everybody feels like, okay, I can be part of this confidently and not I, I don't have to be afraid of what this person might say about me what that person thinks about me no right um, so emphasizing the importance of community is very important so those five are our foundational areas of focus okay uh, knowing first one is again core knowing who the object or the recipient of your worship that is God right and then our character uh, and as followers of Jesus, um, I'll be working on our skill. I'll be working. I'll be working on uh, how we treat uh, our band members, our team members, right? And I'll be doing something to grow in community, right? Um, another scripture that I'm reminded of is in the in the counts in the council of many there is wisdom, right? And uh, the cords of three are not easily broken. Right? So there's strength in togetherness when we come together in unity. And another scripture I give reminded is in Acts chapter 2, um, where it says, all of the disciples of Jesus, all the people were gathered together in one accord. That is to say, they, they were gathered together in unity, in one heart. And when they, when they were gathered together in one heart, then the Holy Spirit of God came on them. So uh, powerful things happen when people of God come together in unity. Okay, so that's why it's our five foundational areas of focus. All right. Um, any questions? Uh, is everybody okay?
All right, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, let's continue. So now that is out of the way, uh, we move into learning how to flow with the spirit. Okay, learning to flow with the spirit. Uh, again, if you remember, I just said that the river always flows down, isn't it? Right, and when the river flows down, you need to, and if you want to swim in that river, you need to know how to swim and you know go with the flow or uh, and whatnot. So it's very important to learn to flow with the spirit. Okay, um, so flowing with the spirit, what does it have to say? Point A, before worship time, before Sunday service, uh, how do we prepare? You know, it starts with, uh, again, this is in context with a worship band, a worship team. That's why you see song selections and all of that. Okay. So it begins with song selection. We look at worship at, as leading people into an encounter with God and a time of preparation for what God wants to do in their lives through the word and the ministry of his word, okay? So uh, before the worship time, before Sunday service, as you prepare with your songs, uh, you know, we look at this, that Sunday service from 10.30 to 10.15, 11.15, sorry, 10.30 to 11.15. You are looking at that one session as uh, leading people into an encounter with God. Right. Uh, when we go to church uh, Sunday mornings, uh, you don't know, uh, you know, with what kind of a worry or a stress or anxiety or what mountains uh, each of the individuals are facing in their own lives. We don't know that, isn't it? Uh, you will never know. Someone might come and in, walk into the church thinking, OK, uh, who's been contemplating suicide and they walk into the church. Okay, I've tried everything. I don't know what's going to happen. Let me just go to this church one last time. And, you know, as one hope, you never know an individual might like, like that will walk in, isn't it? And so it is our responsibility leading that person into an encounter with God. And imagine that person who walked in wanting to commit suicide that week or whatever, but encounters the love of God, goes back changed. Okay, so looking at worship from that perspective, it's not just choosing the songs together, but you're leading people into an encounter with this eternal God. And, and if you know anything about encounter, one encounter is enough for our lives to be changed, isn't it? So that's one aspect. And the other is uh, looking at worship as a time of preparation for what God wants to do in their lives through the word and the ministry of his spirit. It has to be a time of celebration. It has to be a time of jubilant song and singing. Uh, why? Uh, not because the song sounds good and the band is tight and playing everything correctly. It's not just because of that. I'm, I'm saying it has to be a time of celebration because God is going to show up and he's about to do something. And that itself should get us excited. It's like, hey, God is going to show up and he is going to do something. And so me as a vessel, I want to be prepared for God to move through me. Amen. So uh, that's how that's one of the ways how we prepare, uh, you know, looking at worship and those two different aspects. Um, another aspect is have a theme for your worship time. OK, listen to the Holy Spirit beforehand as to what he intends doing that day. You don't just throw a random selection of songs. I have to admit I am guilty. I have done that, you know, just last minute, just put some songs together. Uh, you know, Don't just throw a random selection of songs that does not take the congregation on a journey into God. Okay, now because we understand this first aspect, because we see that God is going to move, because we want to lead people to into an encounter with God, this, you will take this point even more seriously. It's like, okay, you are going to take time and prepare and lean in and, you know, Father, what do you want to do for this service? I want to say what you want me to say. 
I want to sing what you want me to sing. I want to be in tune with your heart. Okay, not to, all of that is not to say, it's like, oh, I listened to God, I heard his voice, you know, I'm doing, no. You're doing all of that to serve him and his people better. Right? Um, this is just a, a small personal uh, experience in, in my life is uh, for, for a solid 14, 15 years of my life, I was part of a, uh, a, a Christian worship band called Living Waters. Um, you know, I was 17 when we started um, and now we are all married and we have kids. But uh, uh, I was the drummer for the band. And uh, one of the things that uh, the worship leader who used to lead, uh, you know, who was the lead vocalist for a band used to do with us is every time he put a song list together before we started practicing, that is before we started, you know, before we plugged in our instruments and I sat on the drums, uh, you know, start practicing the songs, the structures of the song. Before we did any of that, he will sit with us. He will give us the song list, the five songs, and he will say, okay, why he chose that song and why he chose the next song, why he chose the next song. So why he chose the five songs. So, and he will say, okay, it will, it will be like, it will be like a five different songs, but all of them will sound like one big song in that entire list. And for that entire set, it will be like a journey of going from point A to point B so beautifully from, you know, from song to song to song. And all of that is, again, comes from listening to what God wants to do. And so what that did to us as uh, band members is um, now we know where the worship leader wants to go. Right? We know, okay, the worship leader has heard this from God. He knows this is what God wants to do. And now we share his vision. Okay, now It's not just the worship leader who is leading worship. We as his band members, as his uh, drummer or a keyboardist or a bass guitarist, we are all in a way worship leaders serving the vision of this worship leader uh, you know, who is heard from God. Okay? Um, I hope you guys are with me. Um, each song should generally build on the previous song, uh, you know, having a theme. Let's just talk about this, right? Now, let's just talk or uh, think of different themes that we can lead worship in. Okay, you can lead, you can put a song list together on love. Okay, uh, that can have God's love for us, your love for God. That's one theme. You can have a theme on faith. Uh, you can have a theme uh, okay, help me out here. You can have a theme on spiritual warfare. You can have a theme on breakthrough. You can have a theme on freedom. Uh, so many different themes, isn't it? So imagine having five different songs. It's talking about different themes. Okay, first song is about the love of God. Second song is about, uh, you know, hope or faith. And third song is, you know, suddenly is a different theme. <laughs> it's like abstract painting types, you know. And it's like, uh, okay, I don't understand that. But, <laughs> uh, but so having a theme kind of, you know, gives the confidence of knowing where the, where the team is going, where, where the worship leader is taking us. It's very crucial. Okay. And the last point is understand the different phases of pr uh, praise and worship. There are different phases, okay, of praise and worship. So you can have, there's a... Uh, there's a space, there's a time for declaration, there's a time for praise, there's a time for worship, there's a space for personal communion, sailor moments, repentance, expectation, uh, celebration, okay? Um, and all of this comes with being sensitive to hearing what God wants to do. You're not doing any of this because you want to do it but you are led by the Spirit. Amen? You are constantly asking, okay, uh, you know, can I be, can I sing this song one more time? Or is this enough? Should I go to the next song? Uh, you know, you are constantly leaning on the Holy Spirit. Okay, Father, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What are you saying? What should I do? Right? Uh, so just living... Uh, Leading the worship set with complete obedience and surrender 
uh, will will help you see the manifest presence, uh, you know, of of God. Amen. I guess. Um, so you're with me. And it's this whole thing is about just being obedient to the Spirit of God, guys. Okay. Um, an example is, uh, if you don't mind, let's actually look at one scripture. Uh, can we all go to the book of Exodus, chapter forty? Exodus chapter 40. Um, when you're there, uh, just give me a thumbs up or a yes so I know you're there. Okay. Uh, there's a scripture that says obedience is better than sacrifice, isn't it? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, asking yourselves this question when did sacrifice begin? The first sacrifice, the, whole thing about sacrifice is a payment for sin isn't it and the first sin was disobedience and if we look at genesis chapter 2 we're not going to go there i'm just telling you when we go when we look at genesis chapter 2 it says the lord commanded okay the lord commanded adam and eve that they can eat anything from the garden except that one fruit from that tree the Lord commanded and so he expected them to obey his commandment but in Genesis chapter 3 verse 11 we see that they disobeyed and God asks did you eat from the fruit which I commanded you not to eat from and then when you go uh, all the way down in chapter 3 uh, you will see that God makes the first sacrifice for himself that you know he he take he clothes he covers Adam and Eve with the skin of an animal. Right? You with me? So before that first sacrifice, and which went on, you know, from generations that they had to do, uh, you know, uh, perform that sacrifice, the first expectation was obedience. And that is the first key, uh, you know, into into walking in the manifest presence of God is obedience. And that is one of the first steps in flowing with his spirit that's why uh you know we emphasize so much on that okay and when we look at exodus chapter 40 uh, exodus chapter 40 uh, the f in uh, in the niv version that i have the first time it says the first line says then the lord said to moses okay the lord said to moses okay set up the tabernacle so he's commanding moses what to do Okay, now let's go down to verse 16. Exodus 40, verse 16. It says, Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. Okay, if you have a pen, underline that. Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. Okay, let's look at verse 17 to 18. It says, so the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month in the second year. When Moses set up the tabernacle, he put a base in place, erected the frames, inserted the crossbar, and set up the posts. Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent as the Lord commanded him. Okay, and look at the last line of verse 21. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Verse 23. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Verse 25, okay, he did as the Lord commanded him. Verse 27, he did as the Lord commanded him. Verse 29, Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Verse 32, Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And so verse 33, finally, and so Moses finished the work. So from in this chapter, time and time again, you see Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Moses did as the Lord commanded him, as the Lord commanded him. So after Moses finished and after Moses did everything the Lord commanded him to do, after Moses obeyed, to everything what God commanded him to do. Then you see in verse 34, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. 
you see just walking in obedience okay wanting to flow with the spirit walking in wanting to you know to do what he wants to do releases his manifest presence amen uh, that's so beautiful isn't it so that's that uh, the importance of uh, you know of wanting to flow with the spirit is is just so much more than you know a cool statement flow with the spirit it's just so much more it releases the manifest presence of god it releases all of heaven down on earth right um all right let's move on the second point there is during worship time so if you've forgotten what we're talking about we're talking about learning to flow with the spirit okay um, the first part, part was all about how we prepare before the worship time now this part is talking about during the worship time during the worship time do not interrupt the flow don't talk too much uh, you know unless it is necessary uh, you know talk or exhort only when absolutely necessary the less unnecessary talk the better the less unnecessary talk the better uh, I started leading worship at the age of 18. Okay. Uh, I'm a lot older now. If I were to just look back at the times that I've led worship, I was I like, I, I would say to myself, like, dude, I oh, don't talk so much. Just start singing. <laughs> you know, how we always feel like, I mean, is this young, uh, immature worship leader like me, we always feel that there's a need for us to talk and only then God will move something, you know, between the songs and whatnot. But over the years, again, God in his grace and mercy has taught me so beautifully uh, that, hey, you know, you do your part. That is, you lead in worship, uh, you know, you just go ahead and sing, let me do what I have to do. Let the preaching be done by the pastor. You don't do the preaching, you're the worship pastor, you're the worship leader, okay? Uh, but that's also again not to say that do not speak at all or share anything but to re-emphasize the point of being sensitive to what god wants to do okay to say that only you know if you know that god's putting this in your heart you would go and release that word okay be open be sensitive to the prophetic for example listen to the scripture or phrase that god is putting in your heart and sing or declare that okay uh people i cannot emphasize again on the importance of meditating on the word of god and having this word of god in your heart uh you know so richly let it dwell colossians 3 16 it says 3 11 or 16 um, let the word of christ dwell in you richly let it dwell in you richly isn't it um it it just gives you the confidence to release to hear god better Okay, um, so do not interrupt the flow. Be sensitive to the prophetic. Um, repeat songs rather than just rushing through them. Now, again, we we need to draw a balance. Okay, there are times when a worship leader repeats it just too many times, just unnecessarily too many times. Uh, it's like, okay, right, let's move on. Next song, please. You know. <laughs> Uh, we don't repeat for the sake of repeating, you know, vain words, uh, just, you know, like a broken record. At the same time, Psalm 1 says, meditate on his word. Okay. One of, and so when we sing the song, instead of just rushing through a song, it's like, uh, example, give me a song. Say, here I am to worship. Okay. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. All right, I finished singing the chorus once. Let's move on. <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't really mean anything, isn't it? Um, and another personal story, and I'm, I apologize for sharing all these personal uh, experiences, but I, I share this because it's so vivid in my memory. In 2005, uh, in a youth camp, okay? 2005, in a youth camp, uh, 
the evening worship session was going on. I remember where I was standing way at the back and the worship leader was singing the song, uh, Majesty. Majesty, your grace has found me just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hands. Right? I remember the song so beautifully, so vividly. Uh, it was the fifth time when he sang that chorus. It was the fifth time. I even remember which time it was. I'm simply not saying it was, you know, random fire. It, I remember it was the fifth time when he sang that song. Those words hit me. The, especially the lines that says, your grace has found me just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hands. And sometimes we need that, isn't it, guys? Instead of just singing, you know, just random words and thinking it doesn't mean anything, but just let it engage, let it minister to you, right? Let What does it mean? Your grace has found me just as I am. His grace found me. I didn't go searching for it. Empty-handed but alive in your hands. What does it mean to you? Or any songs that you sing in your own language, uh, you know, let those words minister to you, right? Repeat uh, and engage, become one with the song. And that's where this point is birthed out of, okay? Repeat songs rather than just rushing through them, okay? And 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 if you've been being sensitive to the Spirit of God, if you uh, you know, if you've been flowing with the Spirit, he, this point becomes very easy, as in you will know if you have to repeat it or not repeat it. God will inspire you. He will lead you. All you have to do at this point is just follow Him. Amen? Um, and so, going into the next page, uh, in page 59 of the same point, it says, if you feel the congregation is slipping away or not coming along with what you are doing, it is possible that there is a disconnect either in focus level or direction. Okay, so if the congregation is slipping away and not following along with you, now it is not always the, the, the fault of a worship leader. It could also be the focus level of the congregation. They might be distracted or, you know, they want to do just their own thing and some of them might not agree with what you're singing. <laughs> All of that could be a reason, right? Um, so it is possible that there is a disconnect either in focus level or direction. This is on the worship leader or the worship band. So if the direction is clean, uh, if everything, if, if you're sensitive, if you're following, uh, everybody's playing the right song and correct chords and God is doing what he's going to do, uh, you know, then the congregation will be engaged. And so in such moments, again, the emphasis, ask the Holy Spirit what to do. Ask the Holy Spirit what to do what direction to go or how to get the congregation engaged in worship again. Okay, the Holy Spirit may give you a different song or direct you to repeat a song, etc. Okay, so He will lead you. Be tuned to the direction of the Spirit throughout the praise and worship time. Be engaged with Him. Okay, recognize the Sela moments, the quiet moments. Recognize moments of personal worship. Recognize moments of high praise, declaration, prophetic action. Recognize the song of the Lord. Okay? Um, in all of this, be authentic. Uh, be genuine. Don't try to manufacture it. Okay, You don't try to do things on your own. Okay, If there's something that you're doing, ask yourself, is this what God wants me to do? Uh, there's one uh, song I would recommend where you can listen to it later that's ministered to me uh, many, many, for many years now. It's called, you might have heard of it. It's called Where You Go, I Go uh, by Brian Johnson. I'll put it on the chat section. Where You Go, I Go. It, it, the whole song talks about how Jesus walked in obedience, but how Jesus said what the Father wanted him to say, how Jesus did what the Father wanted him to do, where Jesus went, where the Father wanted him to go. So Jesus walked, he lived his life in complete obedience. 
And then finally we see in Philippians 2 that he even obeyed himself to his death, even a death on the cross. Right? So there's so much that we can learn simply with, from the life of Jesus on how he walked his life of obedience and then apply that into our life in worship ministry, in, you know, in praise and worship aspect as well. Okay, so, um, I hope you guys are with me uh, in tune. I hope you guys are flowing with me. Uh, what I'll do right now is I'll stop the recording. We'll take a quick 10-minute break and uh, join back. Right? See you guys in 10 minutes. <laughs>